We are talking today with Randall Parks, who is a newly selected sergeant major in the United States Marine Corps. Um, and we got a little story talking about transition today. So I'm Colonel Garth Massey with Command Ready. Randall, thank you for taking the time uh, to come do our 10 minute talk here. Um, yeah, thank you for having me, Garth. No, nah, I think this will be fun. But to give a little backstory, uh, Randall's got a, kind of a cool story, right? So he is in the Marine Corps. He was transitioning and he built a transition plan got himself into USC's MBV program, which is a great Southern California thing we do with the University of Southern California. Um, it's a master's program for veterans. Uh, and then the Marine Corps saw it to, in its infinite wisdom, decided that, that he should be retained and promoted. And that just put everything akimbo. Now you're, you're staying back in. The transition plan is put on hold for a little while, but I think there's something to be learned in that. So I'll shut up. And what does it take to make the move? What are you doing? Um, so yeah, like you said, I, I started my transition about two years ago, two, three years ago. Um, and I started that just by ex getting out there, talking to people, exploring, um, reaching out to people in different industries, seeing if they'd be willing to have a cup of coffee with me. Um, and just kind of really trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. You know, I think, uh, a lot of Marines struggle with that, uh, when they, when they're looking to transition to the outside, they don't really know what they want to do. They don't really know how to transition those skills. Um, and then along the way, I, I got my real estate license. Um, so I was full steam ahead in that industry. I discovered the master in business for veterans program at USC um, after completing my undergrad in business management. Uh, so I jumped on that. Um, it's, it's been really um, an amazing process. And then as of about a month ago, I got selected for Sergeant Major. So I signed up for another two. Yeah. And well, why not? I mean, <laughs> what a great move. So, I mean, you, you said something at the very beginning that I think is catchy. Uh, the, the, the transition program is six months, right? I mean, they, your commands usually can give you six months. Most people, two, three years out, you're actually checking into a unit that will be, you think, uh, your last unit. But you said you started three years ago, just kicking tires, like, how did you manage not being distracted? And I mean, obviously you still want to do a good job at work. Your reputation is great. So how do you not get distracted when you're looking for the next thing, knowing you've got three years to go? Cause I've seen people go down that well and crash. I think you just have to separate the two. So I started going to an organization called the veterans beer club. Um, it's an amazing group here in San Diego and they've got yeah. chapters all throughout the country. And uh, you go there, you throw on a little name tag, and you go around and talk to other people with different colored name tags. And, you know, I was talking to people that did finance. I did talking to people that um, it were in real estate, commercial real estate, um, banking, all kinds of different industries here in the uh, San Diego area, really just trying to figure out like, what would my niche be? And then when I would leave that, you know, banquet or the, um, that event, you know, I, I would just kind of um, keep those things in the back of my mind. Um, as I was uh, exploring different things, but still executing my job every day in the Marine Corps because uh, I'm still getting paid on the 1st and the 15th. Yeah. So, um, but I think it's very important that you start looking two to three years out because it, you know, if, if you want to get into finance and you don't have a bachelor's degree, like you probably need to get on that using tuition assistance, using your GI bill, whatever it is you need to do while you're still on active duty. So that way, just like we do in anything else in the Marine Corps, we back plan from the point of execution. So if the point of execution for you is to retire at 20 years, you need to back plan off of that. And that's just like anything we do in the Marine Corps. So that's basically all that I did. Yeah. No, that, that, that back planning and, and sometimes we call it left to bang or left to boom. Yeah. Um, the whole idea that you can, you can plan backwards to live forwards. Powerful stuff. Hey, uh, quick question. When you did those networking things, right? You meet people, you shake hands, you get cards. What'd you do with them? Do you stay connected? Did you reach so out to them? I would, I did. So that's what I was talking about in the beginning where I would meet up with other people in industry. So uh, separate from that event, I would go have coffee um, with some of these guys that I was meeting that were transition veterans already that were in industry that were looking to hire. Um, and I would just pick their brain, ask them about how the transition was. 
you can't just rely on the institution to hold your hand all the way until the very end because you're going to fail. You have to be motivated. You have to take the initiative. Um, for me, it, this is a no fail mission. You know, I, I'm married. I got two, two beautiful kids that depend on me to make it happen. So I'm not going to leave it up to the institution to, to go through some two week, you know, TRS course and, um, and then check the box and then move on. Like that's not going to work. Yeah. Well, I will point out like I, general Waldhauser he was the division commanding general at one point and came up and spoke to our, our veterans group uh, in LA and got asked the question, like, why aren't we doing a better job? Like why is at the time taps, you know, you, everybody shows up to the base theater with 500 of their closest friends. And you, you sit yeah. there and you listen to some, you know, retired gunny who now works for the government who gives yeah. classes on how to write a resume. Right. Like yeah. not to ding those guys, but it, uh, you know, not, not always super solid. The new program's actually much more uh, involved, but his answer was, uh, that's not our job. Yeah. Like, like we train to fight and win battles. And, and right now we're in the midst of change, trying to figure out how to do that successfully for the future. And yet, because you've been fed and clothed and trained and, and educated by the organization, I think we just have this assumption that the organization is going to own us forever. And they, it just doesn't. Like, yeah. and, and then we get mad, you know, we, the big green stuff starts coming out and, yeah. and that we complain about the organization because it didn't do our transition. But, but you hit the nail on the head. Like the organization has taught you to take ownership of action. Mm -hmm. and, and if that means getting out and networking, then you get out and network. Um, or if it means more education, like on the civilian side, go do it. Um, but I don't know that that's something, you know, that ever struck me when I was on active duty. And now uh, as a reserve officer, like, you know, I see it every day because I'm, I'm living on the civilian side. But how do you get that message out to people? Because, you know, people will share and they'll, they'll comment on this. And, and I, I, I hope it resonates with folks. But, you know, how do you get that message further on that, like, just because the organization takes care of you, it doesn't mean it's a hundred percent for the rest of your life. It's not the military's responsibility to take care of you. Once you transition out of the military, it's your responsibility. You have to make it happen and you better get used to it because when you get out, like there's, there's nobody going to be holding your hand. Like you have to execute on your own. Right. Uh, so I, I, that's, that's the thing that I, I try and talk to my Marines about. Um, or guys that I've already known that have already transitioned. Um, you know, I joined the Marine Corps in 2001 before September 11th. I checked into my first duty station with two sea bags and a garment bag, right? And now I'm going to extract out of here, you know, probably at around 22 years um, with a bachelor's in business management and a master's from one of the top 20 business schools in the country because I planned, because I executed my plan. Yeah. You know, you, you said something at the beginning, though, uh, confidence, right? I mean, we even put it in the title of, of this one. So where does that confidence come from to get out of the uniform, to do the things you did, go to those networking events, meet other people, talk about things? I mean, there's a lot of industries out there. Um, you know, how do you build that confidence? How do you take that battlefield confidence and push it into the boardroom and make it something, you know, that gets you to like where you are? I mean, I think you're in a very comfortable place. Even if you extend two years, that's just a change in plan. I don't feel very comfortable. <laughs> well, okay. So you're exuding the confidence then. So, so where does that come from? So I just try and do what I've done in the, in the military, which is be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, I applied and was very nervous about applying to one of the top 20 business schools in the country, you know? Um, and walking in there on the first day, we, we all introduced ourselves. We all gave us a, like our one minute spiel um, on who we are and what we do. And there's guys in there like, oh, I just finished my law degree. I'm looking into getting into business. You know, I want to, I want to go to you know, business school. Uh, other guys are like, yeah, I, I, I'm a, a mechanical engineer. I work at North of Groman. And I'm like, hey, I'm first starting parks over here. I bang two rocks together, you know? <laughs> so I was very intimidated, you know, the first day. But as, you know, the class has kind of creeped along, you know, I realized that some of my core competencies that I've gained through military service um, have allowed me to keep up. Um, the, just the, the tenet of like never giving up, never giving in and just pushing through the adversity. So like my adversity right now is corporate finance, marketing and uh, <laughs> accounting, like it's killing me. But 
I figure it out, I find a way, and I just make it happen. Um, and I think if all, every veteran has that. So you just need to take that and run with it. That's it. It's, it's that simple. Just all it takes is all you got. That's it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that's a great point because we get hung up on metrics in America. And sometimes we put like IQ uh, on that list and it's like, oh, that guy's so smart. I could never compete. And the answer is you absolutely compete. It's, it's dedicated, focused practice. It's, it's application of basic principles. People will understand that like in a couple extra IQ points can't cover down on hard focused practice. And in your case, that's showing up, reading the books. Um, Professor Terrell, if you're watching this this far, James Bogle, hey, give him some extra credit points in the next class. <laughs> help, help him out with finance. Uh, you know, if you're if you're there in the MBV just for being on this live thing, uh, you know, I think Randall should get like, a, I don't know, give him 50 extra credit points. Oh, good. I, I don't know I what that's even that. worth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you're in good company over there, and uh, it's it's a neat program. I've I've you know watched it for years. Um, so congratulations on, on at least being in, in involved. Yeah, um, thank you. And I think you're right. The, the confidence is there. But you, I think you get the confidence by taking the step. I mean, it's easy to say I was nervous when you're sitting in the class waiting for your turn to introduce yourself. <laughs> the people that make me sad are the ones who are sitting in their living room going, well, if I was there, I would probably be, you know, you'll never know because you're not sitting there. You're sitting on a couch. Um, so yeah, good on really, you. For it's really about taking that, that step. and. Um, you know, realizing the, the, the difficult things that you've done in the Marine Corps, translating them over yeah. um, into the civilian world. Like, like I was a free fall jump master um, uh, throughout my career. And just like looking at that, like what does it take to do that job? Like throwing a guy out of an aircraft at 25,000 feet, him coasting 20 clicks at night and hitting a, a, a zone, uh, an unmarked zone at night from 20 clicks out. Like like that's very, very difficult to do and to do it well over and over and over again. So if you can do that, like that's what kind of, that's what I was like trying to tell myself, like, if I can do that, I can handle corporate finance. Yeah. I can handle accounting. And that's, yeah, that's yeah, it. You, yeah, you'll get there. And, and frankly, more power to you. I mean, what you find is that everyone out there, uh, even if you're super good at something, there's something you're not. Yeah. Although I would say throwing someone out of a plane, that's just lats, right? Like that's just a, <laughs> No, no, they go out on their own. I just point the direction. <laughs> find All right. Well, hey, Randall, thanks for taking time this morning. Uh, if you are out there and you are looking at your transition, we always uh, link some resources in below. Uh, please send us connection requests to both of us. We'll both message back. Um, and if you, you know, look around on our posts or, or the people we're connected to, there's a lot of resources. And uh, the trick to build the confidence is just take the first step. Now, moral courage is that, that mental decision to get involved, and that's hard. Uh, but physical courage is easy. Once you're running towards that little kid in the street with the bus coming, you're running. And if you don't make it, you, you know, get squashed like a grape, but, but you're running. And, and that's the trick, I think, in a lot of these. It sounds like you got up and you started running like heck because you've got the, the undergrad degree, you got the master's degree, then you get the promotion. I mean, the universe is smiling on you right now, and I, I like it. So congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Garth, for having me on. And uh, I, I know you're going to tag me in this post. So if you're watching this or you see this, and you have any questions, you want any help, any guidance, whatever I can do for you, I will help you. Just send me a, a, a private message and I'll, I'll do what I can. Yeah, I love it. All right, thanks. Good to meet you. Good to meet you.